Good morning, Grade Nines. For those of you who I have not met yet, I am Ms. Shields and I am your Grade 9 Guidance Counselor. I want to start off by congratulating you on completing your first semester of Grade 9. I hope you are settled into your second semester classes, and although it might feel like you've just started them, it is already time to begin to consider what courses you're going to be taking in Grade 10. In front of you, you should have a question and answer package that hopefully will cover all of the things that I go through today. If you have any questions at the end of this presentation, please don't hesitate to book an appointment with me in the guidance office. I am there every morning, Monday to Friday, and you can book an appointment with me using my site guidance bookings icon. Okay, we're going to begin the presentation now. So in front of you, you do have a question and answer sheet, but I'm going to be going a little bit off of that. So if you have a pen or a pencil in front of you, you might, be wa might want to write some things down. At St. Thomas More, we do use my blueprint to make course selections. Those of you who came here from one of our feeder schools last year, you were introduced to my blueprint then. My blueprint can be found on my site. It is an icon on my site, and you will be selecting your courses there. This year, for grade 10, well, going into grade 10, you are going to take six compulsory courses. So those are mandatory courses that you must take, and then you have the option of two electives. One thing that is different about grade 10 than any other grade is that in grade 10, you will also take two half credit courses. So when you log on to my blueprint and look at the grade 10 column, you will see nine different spots for eight classes. And that is because you will be taking the compulsory careers and civics credits. They are half semester long. So you will have, let's say, semester one, period one, careers for nine weeks, and then civics for nine weeks in the same period. Next slide, please. In grade 10, you actually select streams for English, math, science, and Canadian history. So these courses are created to prepare you for the destination-bound courses in your senior grade. And the way you can figure out which stream or what level you are choosing is by looking at the fifth digit in a course code. So in front of you on the televisions, you can see an example of the grade 10 English class. So you will see that the grade 10 English class course code is ENG2D1. That D in the fifth digit spot indicates that this is an academic level course. You will also see courses like ENG 2P1, and that P indicates applied level courses, and then there is also ENG 2L, and that L indicates locally developed courses. So how do you decide? What you need to know is that applied courses in grade 10 typically lead to grade 11 and grade 12 college-bound or mixed courses. Academic courses lead typically to grade 11 and grade 12 university-bound or mixed courses. And then the locally developed courses in grade 10 will lead to grade 11 employment or what we often call workplace-bound courses. Next slide. When you are selecting your courses, something you should know is that all of your courses do not have to be taken at the same stream or level. In grade 11, many of the courses will have prerequisites. A prerequisite is a course you need to take before you can take that grade 11 course. So it's a specific grade 10 course that you must successfully complete first. So how do you decide which courses to take in grade 10? I have a couple of tips written down for you. Number one, read the teacher comments on your report card. That's very important. All of you received your report cards emailed to your parents' email addresses, and 
Rather than just looking at the marks in each of your classes, you should be reading over the teacher comments. There may be advice there on courses to take in grade 10. You should also be speaking to your parents, your guidance counselor, that's me, or if you have a, a resource teacher, book an appointment with them and try to talk to them for advice and guidance. Another thing that's really important that you need to do is think about what your post-secondary destination might be. I know it seems like a long way away, but the courses you take in grade 10 can decide which courses you are able to take in grade 11. So, those of you who are considering or want to keep the option of university open, it's really important that you consider taking the Grade 10 Academic English course. On your handouts, you will see some more advice under question number four, I believe, on that option sheet in front of you. Again, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to book an appointment with me. Again, that's Ms. Shields in the guidance office. Next slide. Okay, so the fun part, you get two electives in grade 10. How do you decide what electives to take? Remember, while you do have to take English, math, science, careers and civics, there may be some other compulsory courses that you didn't choose in grade nine when you were choosing your electives. So in order to graduate in Ontario, every student needs to complete at least one art credit and one phys ed credit. If you didn't take those classes in grade nine, you may wanna consider taking them in grade 10. You do not have to go back and take the grade nine version of those classes. There are grade 10 introductory courses in arts and phys ed. Then you can look at the different group credits. So, on top of your compulsory classes, you do also need to complete one of each credit from the group credits. So under group two, you will see that you have to complete either a business, a second phys ed, a second art, a second French, or co-op. And then in the final group credits, you can take either one of a tech course, a grade 11 science, co-op, French, or computer studies. Consider those when you're looking at your electives. Next slide. Okay, for those of you who may have not met with success in first semester, just so you know, myself, Misty Giovanni from Student Success, uh, Ms. Danielowitz in the ELL office, or one of your certs will likely be contacting you over the coming weeks to discuss what some of your options are. But that might not be before you have to make your course selections for next year. So this is a little bit of advice for those of you who may not have passed a class. You need to know that in order to graduate with an Ontario Secondary School Diploma, you have to successfully complete 30 credits. If one of the courses you didn't pass was a compulsory course, so that's English, math, science, gym. For those classes, you must repeat that course. Any failed compulsory course should be chosen when you select your courses for next year. So for example, a science, you might take the grade nine science first semester and then grade 10 science second semester. Another option for you is to repeat the compulsory courses in summer school. I do not have summer school information just yet. It typically arrives to our school around the end of March. So pay attention to announcements every day because there will be information about summer school when it arrives. If you decide to take summer school course, you can change your course selections after the fact by booking an appointment with me in the guidance office. Uh, remember, if you take eight courses per year, you have 32 chances to complete the 30 credits. Failing a course, even an elective, may jeopardize your opportunity to take those spares in grade 12. So please, be diligent this semester. Remember the three keys to success. Ask questions, attend class every day, and hand in everything so we can avoid this scenario. Next slide. Okay, in front of you, you will see some images of my site. 
And you have in front of you a screenshot of what my MySite account looks like. You don't have as many icons there, but what you do have is an icon for my blueprint. That's that blue icon with the white M. That is where you're going to select your classes for next year. Next slide. When you log into my blueprint, you will see on the left hand side of the screen, uh, choices, some selections. You're going to click on high school. Next slide. From there, what will come up is a high school plan for you. And your grade nine column will already be filled out with the classes you took this year. And then the grade 10 column will have some blanks. That is where you're going to be entering your classes. You're going to click on the plus sign for each row and you'll add a course there. Next slide. So when you click on the plus icon, a drop down menu will show up with all the different course selections. Next slide. When you click on a particular course, what will then pop up is a descriptor box. So in this text box, you will see information about what the course is about, and you will also see the prerequisites, or which means, again, the courses you need to have successfully passed in order to take that class. Next slide. On the right-hand side of your high school planning page on My Blueprint, you will also see a text box or a widget that says graduation indicator. There you can view your progress to see which courses you have already earned towards your 30 mandatory credits and which ones you still need to take by clicking on the blue view progress button. When you look at your graduation progress, you will see the courses that you have planned to take, those you have earned, and the ones that are required. I'm not sure how many of you can see the screen in your classroom very clearly, but when you do log on to My Blueprint, the courses that you've already successfully completed will have a green check mark beside them. Next slide. Some students will consider taking a grade 11 course in grade 10. And if that's you, a couple of things that you need to make sure you are aware of. The Ministry of Education requires what we call full disclosure of grade 11 and 12 final marks. That means that every attempt at a grade 11 or 12 course that you take will always appear on your official transcript of courses. Why is this important? It's very important that you make sure you're prepared for the increased expectations and workload of a grade 11 course if you are thinking of taking it in grade 10. I would strongly encourage you to talk to, you, to that subject specific teacher to seek their advice or come and see me in the guidance office. Next slide. When you are deciding on the classes you're going to take next year and you're thinking about um, whether or not you're going to take uni uh, sorry, academic or applied classes, some things you need to know about your destination. So again, in grade 11 and 12, we move to destination bound courses. So your M level courses are for university, M or C level courses typically prepare you for um, mixed or college uh, college or university, we have workplace bound. And then those of you who are already thinking that you might want to consider an apprenticeship, go into the skilled trades, you might be considering co-op in grade 11. Next slide. Okay, so again, this might seem like it's really far ahead, but it's never too early to start planning. Those of you who are looking ahead to what you're going to do after high school, which should be all of you, need to know that grade 10 academic courses are typically the prerequisite courses for the university level courses in grade 11 or 12. When it comes to university a couple years from now, they are going to be looking for a minimum of six URM courses. 
Most of those programs are going to be requiring above 75% in six of those classes. So something to be aware of and think about as you are planning the long-term, long-range goals for yourself. Next slide. Those of you who might be considering college, typically those programs, the prerequisites are the C courses. I've included a website here that you can check out. It's called ontariocolleges.ca. By, by going to that website, you and your adults at home can explore the different options available as far as programming throughout Ontario and find out what courses you might need in high school. Again, I know that after high school seems far away, but the classes you pick in grade 10 will create opportunities for you in grade 11 and 12. Next slide. Okay, so I sound like a broken record, but proper planning is essential for your academic success. Some resources available to you. So I've already showed you your pathway plan and your graduation progress on my blueprint. You have my blueprint access at any time by logging into my site. You don't have to be in a class where your teacher is bringing it up to you. So please check out that resource. It's a great resource to kind of figure out where you're going. You can even enter in some grade 11 and 12 classes that you might be considering when you're sitting with your adults at home and planning for this. Next year in your career studies class, you're going to learn a lot of information about the various destinations available to you and you're going to be doing a lot of planning there. One thing that we often say in guidance office to our students is to consider planning from your destination and working backwards. If you know what it is you want to do after high school or you have a vague idea of what you want to do after high school, you can start there and start planning backwards. What are you going to need in grade 12 to get into that program? What prerequisites do those grade 12s have in grade 11 and then grade 10? Now, sometimes students get a little bit nervous, They're like, oh no, I have to think about what I want to do after high school and I'm not even sure. What if I make a mistake? Don't worry. It is possible to change your pathways. If you change your mind in grade 10, after you take your careers class, you discover a new occupation that you hadn't heard about before. You can change pathways, uh, but it may take a little bit of extra time or planning, and that's where coming to see me comes in really handy, okay? So make sure you have the proper grade 10 prerequisites, and remember, most university level courses will require grade 10 academic English. Next slide. Okay, so as I mentioned, you can use this pathway planning chart, the grade 10 column, that's how you're selecting your courses for next year. But you can also play around with putting in classes into grade 11 and 12 as well. Next slide. So most important information for the day is when is all of this stuff due? How long do I have to talk to my adults at home, to meet with my guidance counselor, with student success resource? When does this all have to be handed in? The registration due date is March 4th. So what that means is by that date, you must have all of your courses selected in my blueprint. You will have to have your $50 activity fee paid for and a school cash online receipt. And I'm not sure if it's been sent out yet, but typically at some point over the next week or two, you will receive a verification of your registration form. If there's any updates to your personal information, like home address and home phone number, your parents are asked to complete that as well. All of that to be completed before March 4th. If you have any questions after this presentation, again, my name is Ms. Shields. You can find me in the guidance office every morning. You would log on to my site, Find the guidance bookings icons and book with me. If you don't remember my name, look for the grade nine guidance counselor. Grade nine teachers, thank you so much for your time and hope to see many of you grade nines in the coming weeks as we plan and prepare for this exciting adventure of grade 10. Have a good day.